Hi everyone, it's Katrina. There have been some amazing recent discoveries about prehistoric creatures recently. Today I'll be showing you some seriously ancient animals, from an enormous and deadly sea monster to a new prehistoric cat and a shocking super sense that scientists never knew that dinosaurs had. The Beast of Peru 39 million years ago, the heaviest animal that ever lived swam through the ocean above what is now Peru. Scientists think it was even bigger than the blue whale, which is quite a statement since blue whales are the biggest animals that have ever existed. Not just during our lifetime, but ever. Peru's Ica Valley was completely flooded in prehistoric times, making it a vibrant ocean teeming with majestic creatures and real sea monsters. These days, the ocean is long gone. The floor of that ancient ocean is now the Ica Desert, a place where scientists frequently pull fossils out of the rock. It was scientists from the University of Pisa who uncovered the fossilized remains of what could be the largest whale ever. Researchers uncovered a set of unusually dense whale bones. From the very beginning, they understood the bones were definitely from a cetacean, but not from any cetacean alive right now. This creature was really strange looking. It was stout and unusually proportioned. Scientists believe it was probably about 15 feet shorter than a modern blue whale, but it was three times heavier. Just try to picture in your head how big this animal was. Three times heavier than a blue whale is shocking and doesn't even seem scientifically possible. Researchers believe the massive sea creature had a set of legs on the bottom of its body that it used to scramble across the seabed. It was so heavy, it had to have legs to propel itself along. The skeleton pulled out of the Peruvian desert weighed roughly 8 tons. To give you some perspective, its skeleton is roughly three times heavier than the skeletal structure of the biggest dinosaurs known to science. A single vertebra uncovered by the team weighed over 200 pounds. That's like if a single piece of your spine was so large it could only be picked up and moved using a crane. The Other Rexes In Morocco, the fossils of two relatives of the famous Tyrannosaurus rex were recently discovered. The fossils are from two totally new dinosaur species, further fueling the evidence that Morocco was one of the most dangerous places on the planet during the age of the dinosaurs. These new fossils were uncovered outside Casablanca. Both of them belong to the larger Abelisauridae family. They were carnivorous predators fairly similar to tyrannosaurs in North America, only on the other side of the world, and they had weirdly stubby faces like bulldogs. These were the other T. rexes, dominating Africa at the end of the Cretaceous. One of the new predators was fairly short, only about 15 feet long. But it's the diversity that is truly impressive. Dr. Nick Longrich from the University of Bath said a lot of dinosaurs are being discovered in this part of Morocco. The fossils are in a weird location, found at the bottom of a shallow tropical sea that was once full of sharks and mosasaurs. So many ferocious carnivores have been found from the same time and in the same place their coexistence is baffling. All these different abelisaurus were predatory monsters, yet they all thrived in the same place. There must have been an abundance of food to sustain a diverse population of apex predators. In most cases, one major predator reaches the top of the food chain and dominates an area, maybe two. But 66 million years ago in Morocco, there were too many apex predators to count. This may have been the most diverse piece of property of the Cretaceous world, and definitely one of the more dangerous places to be if you're not a predator. Sadly, their evolutionary superiority didn't protect them from the cataclysm of the asteroid impact. The Pliosaur Skull A beast of preposterous proportions was found on England's Jurassic Coast. No, it isn't the English version of Jurassic Park, it's a coastline so rich in fossils that it's considered one of the best places to scavenge for prehistoric remains in the world. Scientists have found a lot of stuff here, but nothing that compares to this most recent find. They unearthed the fossilized skull of one of the most dangerous predators this world has ever seen. 
The discovery was so amazing that Sir David Attenborough himself investigated. Paleontologists collected the skull of a pliosaur from the cliff at the edge of the beach. The skull is 150 million years old. For eons and eons, it remained entombed within the cliffs. Millions of years of erosion have now revealed the monster for the first time. When it was alive, the pliosaur was one of the scariest things in the ocean. How exactly did paleontologists go about pulling a dinosaur skull from a cliff? The discovery was a little less sophisticated than you might think. A fossil enthusiast was poking around on the beach near Kimberidge Bay when they came across the snout of the pliosaur. The enthusiast alerted the proper authorities. What followed was an intense extraction project from halfway down the eroding cliff. Paleontologists dangled from ropes as they slowly and carefully prepped the fossil for removal. Then they had to lift the skull to the top of the cliff for transport. This wasn't a simple afternoon job. I'd say my favorite thing about this particular skull is that you don't need an imagination to see how frightening the pliosaur was. Its skull is so perfectly preserved, you can see its crocodile-like jaw, jammed full of over 100 teeth. You can even see the big holes on the side of its skull that were once filled with muscles. Muscles used to crunch prey. Researchers think its bite force was in the same range as the T-Rex. In other words, the pliosaur was the rex of the sea. Its skull is around 10 feet long, which means its body was probably about 40 feet long. Mystery Claw 50 years ago, a mysterious claw was discovered in the province of British Columbia. Now it has been identified as belonging to a cousin of Triceratops. This bizarre creature is the first unique dinosaur ever discovered in British Columbia. It lived 67 million years ago and was so adorable it doesn't even make sense. The claw was discovered buried in some rocks along the edge of a rail line in the wilderness near Smithers. But because this was so long ago, there wasn't much scientists could do with a random claw, so it went into storage and remained there until recently. Victoria Arbor and a group of her colleagues came across the claw and were captivated by it. They recently wrapped up several years of analysis, which led to the naming of the new species. It's called Ferrosaurus sustutensis which translates to Iron Lizard from the Sustut River. Other than the claw, researchers have a couple of toe bones and some shoulder bones, but that's it. These small, fragmented bones can fit in a pizza box, yet they are the only things remaining of an entire species. That's how rare dinosaur bones really are. Most scientists agree that only a tiny fraction of ancient species are known to modern scientists. Humans will most likely never identify all the dinosaurs and prehistoric beasts that once roamed the lands. But just how adorable was Ferrosaurus? It looked very similar to Triceratops, but was more cartoonish. It had a short frill, no horns on its face, and a parrot-like beak. And although it lumbered around on four legs, it likely had the ability to walk upright. Imagine a Triceratops without the horns and waddling around on two legs. Aww. The Utah Dino In the state of Utah, a dinosaur species from 100 million years ago has been discovered. The new species is as new as it gets, with not a single other specimen known. Scientists named the creature Iani Smithy. The dinosaur wasn't nearly as frightening or ferocious as some of the dinos on our list today, but it was a hungry plant eater. This particular fellow was a juvenile, about 10 feet long and tough as nails. Lindsay Zano from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences said Iani Smithy had powerful jaws for crunching through plant material. It was a type of ornithopod, which are more casually known as duck-billed dinosaurs. It may have been related to other duck-billed creatures like the Edmontosaurus from Canada. The dinosaur isn't particularly unique, seeing as there were lots of duck-billed dinosaurs around. Still, it lived in an interesting time. It was alive during the last part of the Cretaceous, from 145 to about 66 million years ago. Iani Smithy lived through a significant warming period, then died with the asteroid that killed the rest of the dinosaurs. This particular time in Earth's history was extremely volatile. Lindsay said the planet suddenly experienced a temperature spike, which is known as the Cretaceous Thermal Maximum. From out of nowhere, greenhouse gas concentrations spiked. 
greenhouse gas levels were about four times higher than they are today, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Also, the sea level was way higher. Not a few feet higher, as in maybe expect some light flooding. The sea level was about 1,000 feet higher than it is right now. Just try to picture what the Earth would look like today if it was under 1,000 extra feet of water. Oh, and I can't forget to mention the poles. The North Pole and South Pole were blanketed with sweltering hot rainforests. A journey across the North Pole would be like trying to walk through the jungle from Vietnam to Cambodia. The main thing to remember is that the Earth is always changing. This mysterious duckbill dinosaur from Utah lived in a climate that was so hot and humid that modern humans almost certainly wouldn't be able to survive it. And now for a quick break, because it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Michael Bryant and Yellow Ant for supporting this channel. We wouldn't be here without you! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about prehistoric creatures. The Ancient River Dolphin Scientists at the Smithsonian have revealed a totally new species of river dolphin that they have named Isthminia panamensis. Fossil fragments taken from Panama helped reveal not just a species new to science, but insight into the evolution of freshwater river dolphins. The fossil is roughly 6 million years old. It was found on the coast of the small Caribbean town of Pina. The fossil consists of a partial skull still connected to the lower jaw, with one nearly complete set of teeth. Plus, the skull is connected to the right shoulder blade and two small bones from the dolphin's flipper. It's called a single fossil because all the pieces are still fused together, even though the bones are from different parts of the body. In total, the dolphin was probably about 9 feet long. Right now, there is only a small handful of river dolphin species remaining in our world. Humans have destroyed the rivers with such ferocity that only three remain for sure. The Chinese river dolphin is likely extinct since it hasn't been seen in decades. The other three are all considered endangered. The fossil from Panama shows that river dolphins were widespread across the planet. It belonged to a group of dolphins who only recently transitioned from living in the vast saltwater expanse of the ocean. It looked similar to dolphins in the ocean, but was in the midst of developing a longer and more narrow snout, just like what modern river dolphins have. The longer snout is better for navigating and hunting in windy rivers. This river dolphin has given scientists a clear timeline for when dolphins started invading the rivers of the world. About 6 million years ago, they started adapting to places like the Amazon, living in the bountiful river systems. Tyrannosaur drumsticks What's your favorite part of the chicken? Do you consider yourself a wing fan or maybe a drumstick is more your fancy? Paleontologists at the Royal Tyrrell Museum in Canada have just made a shocking discovery about the tyrannosaur. It turns out the preferred meal of tyrannosaur teenagers was the drumstick. It all started with a cleaning technician. The technician was cleaning the fossil of a Gorgosaurus libratus when he noticed small toe bones coming out of the rib cage. The technician called a meeting where it was decided the specimen would be flipped over. From there, things took a juicy twist. According to Dr. Francois Terrien, the curator of dinosaur paleontology, two leg bones were discovered. These small leg bones were basically dinosaur drumsticks. Although the Gorgosaurus was young, it still weighed about 740 pounds, and yet it was one-eighth the size of a full adult. These things were the most ferocious carnivores of North America 75 million years ago, long before the more famous T-Rex showed up on the scene. An adult Gorgosaurus libratus grew over 30 feet long and weighed over 3 tons. But when you put it beside its close relative, Albertosaurus, the Gorgosaurus libratus is still considered a junior carnivore. The drumsticks in its ribcage were found to be from the bird-like herbivore Citipes elegans. Dr. Terrien said the legs suggest juvenile Gorgosaurus were fond of drumsticks specifically. The dinosaur may have pulled the legs from the little bird on purpose, swallowed them whole, and discarded the rest of the carcass. To put things as simply and as grotesquely as possible, this young dinosaur wandered around prehistoric Canada biting the legs off birds. Then they left their mutilated bodies for the scavengers to pick clean. The Prehistoric Spanish Cat 
An entirely new species of prehistoric cat has been discovered in Spain. It lived about 15.5 million years ago and was fairly similar to a modern Iberian lynx. It wasn't particularly big, but it was still ferocious. Scientists have named the new cat Whiskers Meow Wow. I'm just kidding, it's named Majeri Felis Pegne. Although the new cat was only recently identified, its fossilized remains were uncovered over a decade ago in 2007. That's how long it takes to get from the fossil being discovered to a new animal being confirmed. Scientists had to analyze its partial jawbones, look at its teeth, and put together all the different clues. Scientists think it hunted with a very specific technique. It likely went straight for the throat, crunching its victim's neck with a series of intense bites. But what did the prehistoric feline look like? I would love to tell you how strange and unique the cat was, but that simply isn't the case. Majeri Felis Pegni looked really similar to a modern house cat, just with bigger teeth and a much feistier attitude. The Giant Millipede These days, England is not home to very many frightening animals. It doesn't have leagues of toxic serpents slithering through the grass. There are no more bears in the British Isles, nor are there terrifying sea creatures beyond its shores. But that wasn't always the case. England was home to the biggest bug that ever lived a nightmare-inducing creepy crawly you're going to wish you'd never heard of. Neil Davies from the University of Cambridge said it was a complete fluke of a discovery. In 2018, a piece of sandstone fell from a seaside cliff onto the beach. The stone split open, revealing what kind of looks like a fossilized track from a tank's treads. But really, it's the fossilized body of a giant millipede. These new discoveries are proving that England is home to some seriously creepy fossilized monsters. But just how big of a millipede was this thing? Could it have eaten an entire person? Let me put it this way. The fossil was so big, it took four people to carry it. The millipede, scientific name Arthropleura, lived during the Carboniferous period, 326 million years ago. This was a time when creepy crawlies grew to behemoth proportions. The abundance of oxygen helped creatures grow way bigger than they do now. 100 million years before the first dinosaur, bugs as big as cars were as common as the squirrels down at your local park. This millipede was roughly 8.6 feet long. Now, I know what you're thinking. It was 8.6 feet long, but as a millipede, it probably weighed a couple pounds and was really skinny. That is incorrect. The freakish bug weighed at least 110 pounds and was just as frightening as the worst thing you can imagine. Think about the implication of its size. To grow so big, Arthropleura must have eaten a very nutritious diet. 300 million years ago, Britain was on the equator. The landmass was covered in a lush jungle and filled with early amphibians and some of the first invertebrates. The immense scope of life allowed giant bugs to have a constant source of food, food for growing big and strong. The Egyptian Mini Whale Africa is home to some of the biggest and oldest whales that have ever lived. I don't mean the coast of Africa. Most of the whales I'm talking about are found in the desert. For example, Tutsitas ryanensis. This miniature whale lived 41 million years ago and was recently found fossilized in Egypt. The fossil of the mini whale was discovered near Wadi El Hitan, one of the most densely concentrated whale graveyards in the world. When I say fossil, what I really mean is one tooth and a few bones. A team of scientists from Mansoura University uncovered a single exposed tooth in a chunk of limestone, then the rest of the fossils. The tooth belonged to a previously unknown whale species belonging to an extinct group called Bacillosaurid. Scientists believe Bacillosaurid were some of the first whales to live strictly in the water. They were the initial descendants of land whales, the forerunners of whales who stomped around on land with legs. Believe it or not, Egypt has some of the greatest fossils of four-legged whales anywhere in the world. How, you wonder? It's because the Sahara Desert was at the bottom of the ocean between about 60 and 30 million years ago. The tiny whale only weighed 400 pounds and was a measly 8 feet long. It's the smallest known member of its order. That being said, it's also the oldest fully aquatic whale specimen ever discovered in Africa. 
This creature's single tooth is a snapshot of evolution itself. This was one of the first whales to brave the depths of the sea with its legs that hadn't totally become flippers yet. Scientists named it after Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Fossils in Whales Forget about fossils of whales, let's check out some fossils in whales. In 2023, archaeologists uncovered 150 unknown fossilized species at a marine archaeological site. The fossils are majorly old, from about 462 million years ago. Although scientists don't know precisely what species the fossils belong to, they do know what kinds of creatures they were. These are the fossilized remains of starfish, sponges, and worms. And don't forget a few barnacles, too. These marine animals come from a critical time in the history of Earth. They came into existence during the Ordovician era, just after the Cambrian period. Life on the planet had exploded in a big way, but it hadn't made it to land yet. The only complex animals alive were dwelling in the oceans. It was a time when shrimps, algae, fish, and early sea beasts started to diversify in an exciting way. This new treasure trove of fossilized life was found in a quarry, a popular fossil deposit named Castle Bank. The initial discovery was made in 2013 by a research fellow from the local university. He spotted a sponge and collected a few small fossils, but there wasn't a real study done until COVID-19. That was when the lockdown gave scientists time to investigate. Now they have found nearly 200 animals that nobody has ever identified before. Some of these creatures had soft bodies and were tiny, only a millimeter in length. Others evolved to have tough skin and exoskeletons. As a collection, the fossils are unprecedented. They represent a cornucopia of early life forms, living creatures who got their start half a billion years ago. Scientists are hoping to continue identifying the animals and just maybe help unravel the secrets of life itself. The Chicken from Hell The Midwest isn't a particularly dangerous place these days when it comes to giant birds. But if you lived in South Dakota 100 million years ago in the Cretaceous period, you might not have lasted very long. There was a chicken from hell that roamed the Dakotas and feasted on anything it pleased. It was a dinosaur that looked like a chicken. It was 170 pounds and covered in thick feathers. The fossilized remains of this previously unknown monstrosity were recently unearthed in Meade County, where the legendary Hell Creek Formation is. The formation is famous because something happened here millions of years ago that caused a lot of old plants and animals to become fossilized. Researchers from Oklahoma State University were the ones who came across the ancient bones. They originally thought they were looking at a dinosaur called Anzu Wiliae, but no, it's a totally new species, a terrifying chicken from the depths of your worst nightmare. Scientists say the hellbird is a canagnathid, part of the larger oviraptorosaur family, or in plain English, a human-sized chicken with lanky arms and hands that could grasp. The thought of a giant chicken is frightening enough without dexterous hands. The chicken could have picked you up and looked you straight in your eyes before it ate you. Scientists have named the new species Eoneophron infernalis, which translates to Pharaoh's Dawn Chicken from Hell. The Gluttonous Ichthyosaur An ancient marine reptile known as an ichthyosaur had a truly legendary last meal. It was a last meal so epic that I'm telling you about it today, 240 million years after the fact. The ichthyosaur, a creature kind of like a vicious version of a dolphin, bit off way more than it could chew. The ichthyosaur was 15 feet long, comparable to a canoe. When scientists began looking at its fossilized remains, which were found in China, they were shocked to find a big bulge in its belly. But this sea monster wasn't pregnant. Its belly contained the undigested remains of a lizard-like reptilian creature called Thalatosaur. It was only about three and a half feet shorter than the ichthyosaur. This incredible failed snack has broken a bunch of records. Scientists believe it's the oldest evidence of a marine reptile eating an animal bigger than a human. 
It's also the longest known prey of a marine reptile from the dinosaur age. Never before has such a large creature been found consumed by a marine animal alive alongside dinosaurs. It was such a ridiculously large meal that the ichthyosaur died trying to swallow it. Scientists are baffled as to why the ichthyosaur would even attempt such an impossible feat. According to Ryosuke Motani from the University of California, blunt teeth suggest they were better off eating soft creatures like cephalopods. Scientists didn't think that blunt teeth could be used for eating larger, more solid prey. Maybe the ichthyosaur was bored of its usual food and wanted to try something new. Maybe the smaller reptile was an enemy of the ichthyosaur. After a brutal fight, perhaps the ichthyosaur decided to eat its nemesis. What do you think happened here? Why would an animal eat another animal that could barely fit in its stomach? Let me know what you think happened in the comments. Dinosaur Super Senses Some dinosaurs had what you might consider supernatural abilities, or super senses if you will. Dinosaurs like Thessalosaurus neglectus, whose sense of smell was unparalleled among dinosaurs. A recent study of its skull fossil at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences revealed the incredible nasal powers of this tiny ancient beast. Researchers at the university used the CT scanner to reconstruct the soft tissue within the specimen's ancient skull. Then they compared the sensory structures to other dinosaurs. They also looked at their closest living relatives to determine the size of the dinosaur's brain, what her balance was like, and what her smell was like. Did I mention she was a lady dinosaur named Willow? According to Lindsay Zano, the team uncovered that Willow had the uncanny ability to hear low-frequency sounds. But there was one aspect of her hearing in particular that caught scientists by surprise. To understand this, you first need to understand that not all dinosaurs had the same hearing abilities. They all evolved differently, so certain dinosaurs made sounds that the rest of the dinosaurs couldn't hear. Scientists are fairly certain that many dinosaurs communicated with one another like modern birds, tweeting and roaring and making vocalizations. Willow was able to pick up a wide range of frequencies, including the frequency at which the T-Rex vocalized. This means that Willow had likely adapted to recognize the vocalization of an apex predator. Being a small, burrowing dinosaur who mostly lived underground, this was a big tactical advantage. Thessalosaurus would have easily been able to avoid running into a T-Rex by listening for it. But what about the smell? Its sense of smell has been described as overdeveloped. It could smell everything. This was likely because it was a burrowing animal. Even today, animals that spend a significant amount of time underground often have a heightened sense of smell. This new study is the first time scientists have linked digging, burrowing, and super smell back to a dinosaur. The Ancient Sturgeon Just outside the Canadian city of Edmonton, dinosaur capital of the Great White North, hikers came across a fossilized skull. A couple of weekend warriors were hiking Capilano Park when they stumbled upon the remains of a fish that lived 70 million years ago. Paleontologists from the University of Alberta confirmed the fossils belong to a prehistoric sturgeon. You may have eaten a sturgeon before, as they are a hugely popular fish. They are the biggest fish in Alberta, growing over 10 feet long. Sadly, they are currently at risk. It takes 25 years for sturgeon to reach breeding age, meaning it's difficult for their numbers to stay positive with all the fishing. But what's really crazy is just how long they've been around. Lake sturgeon have been in the river systems of Saskatchewan since before the dinosaurs went extinct. And not just in the western provinces, they've lived all over the world. A similar fossil was recently discovered in Morocco, this one a little younger. It was from 66 million years ago and represented the first sturgeon ever found in Africa. Even though there was only one fossil, there were likely millions or billions of these fish living in African river systems throughout history. Scientists believe that sturgeons have been around for 200 million years. There is a very good reason that fishermen refer to them nowadays as living fossils. The Shrew 
I'm going to introduce you now to a prehistoric creature that some might call boring. This creature was kind of like a shrew, or maybe a little more like a mouse. It was small, weighed about the same as a feather, and dwelled in the harsh Arctic environment. During the Cretaceous era, the ice mouse lived in burrows under the soil in total darkness for months at a time. 73 million years ago, the ice mouse was one of the smallest yet most fascinating inhabitants of ancient Alaska. It had an extraordinary sense of smell, just like Thessalosaurus. It used its keen senses to navigate the prehistoric forests, burrowing underneath the leaves and scavenging in the soil for worms and insects. But what was it like to be in Alaska before the death of the dinosaurs? The truth is that Alaska wasn't that much different from what it is now. It was full of birds and mammals like it is today, only it also had some significantly humongous dinosaurs. The land territory of Alaska extended higher into the north, much deeper into the Arctic. Every winter, the land was plunged into inescapable darkness for four long months. During those dark months, the ice mouse lived peacefully underground. It only weighed about 11 grams, the same as two thin sheets of copy paper. Scientists were lucky they found the animal at all. A couple of its teeth were uncovered by paleontologists from the University of Alaska while sifting through dirt at the banks of a river on the northern coast. This was a very remote area, about 75 miles from Dead Horse. The place is accessible only by bush plane or snowmobile. As they sifted through the dirt, two tiny fragments captured a researcher's eye. They were tiny teeth from the ice mouse, each one no bigger than a grain of sand. The ice mouse is changing how scientists view Arctic animals. The assumption used to be that animals grew much larger in Arctic areas. The larger the creature, the greater its fat stores for hibernation. But this tiny mouse didn't have any fat stores. It was small and couldn't even hibernate. Scientists think it must have fallen into a state of reduced activity in the winter to stay alive. Now, scientists are curious what other small creatures may have lived in prehistoric Alaska that have yet to be found. Feathered Scare Tactics Scientists recently completed an exciting new study that involved a robot dinosaur named Robopteryx. The robotic dino was used to copy ancient dinosaur behaviors, allowing researchers to gain insight into the evolution of feathered wings. The reason being that scientists have always wondered what the original point of having feathers was. Wings can grow without feathers, suggesting they were for something other than flight. As it turns out, feathers may have been used as scare tactics by early dinosaurs. The new research is supporting a theory that not all scientists have agreed with. That theory is that wings didn't evolve for the purpose of flight, but rather for hunting. Small dinosaurs who hunted insects and tiny creatures likely began growing wings so that they could startle their prey out of hiding places. Picture a raptor about as tall as your knee standing before a crop of tall grass. It wants the bugs that are in the grass but doesn't know how to get to them. With its wings, the dinosaur flaps furiously, freaking out the bugs so that they jump out of their hiding places. Bam! The dinosaur just scared dinner right into its mouth. Scientists confirmed this worked using Robopteryx. They equipped the robot dinosaur with feathered wings and then observed how grasshoppers responded to its scare tactics. Sure enough, the grasshoppers behaved in a way that would have yielded the robot dinosaur a tasty meal. The end result of this study proves dinosaurs likely developed feathers to scare bugs. But this isn't the only proof to support the theory. Only a handful of feathered dinosaurs have ever been found. And so far, only a single group of dinosaurs have been found with pinaceous feathers, which are required for flying. The rest of the feathered dinosaurs had feathers that didn't even work in the sky. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Messel Pit Around 48 million years ago, thousands of animals mysteriously died in a deep lake near what is now the German city of Darmstadt. For some mysterious reason, the lake became a death trap for countless animals. Their remains were preserved by layers of clay and dead algae, and they sat untouched until the late 19th century.
By then, the lake that had existed during the Eocene, when global temperatures and sea levels were much higher, was long gone. Miners arrived to the site in the middle of the forest, attracted by the fossil fuels, and carved out an open pit mine. It became known as the Messel Pit. The mine closed during the 1970s. The fossils inside were pretty much forgotten about by nearly everyone, except a small group of scientists and other activists who opposed turning the site into a garbage dump. They won the battle in 1992, and excavations have been ongoing ever since. Most paleontological sites are closed to the public, but the Messel Pit offers guided tours to visitors. An unusually large number of fossilized land mammals have been found there, and scientists still aren't sure why. They think that carbon dioxide from an underwater volcano may have bubbled up and suffocated all the creatures near the shore. It's also possible that the animals could have died from drinking water that contained toxic algae blooms, or may have been washed into the lake by nearby streams that drained into it. In any case, it is full of prehistoric creatures, with their fur and even flesh still intact. There have been thousands of animals found at the pit, including 45 different mammals. Some of the most fascinating are an extinct squirrel three feet long and prehistoric pregnant horses. It's like a time capsule that allows scientists to reconstruct the world as it used to be. England's largest sea dragon. Earlier this year, scientists announced the discovery of what might be the largest and most complete sea dragon fossil ever found in the UK. Measuring 33 feet long, the prehistoric creature lived around 180 million years ago. Paleontologists are calling it one of the greatest finds in British paleontological history. And there have been a lot of fossils found there. This sea monster was a type of marine reptile called an ichthyosaur that had a long snout and big teeth. It looked a bit like a modern dolphin, except scarier. While the species, scientifically known as Temnodontosaurus trigonodon, was already known before the discovery, this is the first time it's been unearthed in the UK. A conservation worker named Joe Davis found the fossil early last year while walking through the area with a colleague. They noticed what looked like vertebrae sticking out of the mud and followed the bones until they came across what looked like a jawbone, at which point the men knew they had probably discovered an enormous fossil. For now, scientists are continuing to study and conserve the fossil and will release their studies later on. Strange Ancient Eel In 1890, a bizarre eel-like fossil was found in a Scottish quarry, leaving scientists stumped about what it was exactly. It lived between 398 and 385 million years ago, long before the first dinosaurs emerged into existence. The toothless creature, dubbed Paleospondylus gunny, measured just 2.4 inches long and may have had a cartilaginous skeleton along with well-developed fins, but no limbs. There have been numerous attempts to identify the ancient animal, with various studies suggesting that it was an early lungfish, a hagfish, or perhaps a shark-like species. But the truth is that scientists have been baffled for over 130 years since its discovery. And the one thing they can all agree on is that the mystery continues even though many more fossils of the species have been found. Experts have gotten one step closer to placing this creature in the evolutionary tree thanks to high-resolution imaging. Their findings suggest that the species could even be one of our earliest ancestors. The team determined that the creature's ear canal was constructed similarly to modern fish, birds, and mammals, making it more advanced along the evolutionary timeline than some species that are more primitive, like the jawless hagfish. Its cranial features place it in a group with all other four-limbed creatures, and even more shockingly, indicate that it could be the ancestor of all tetrapods. Lead study author Tatsuya Hirasawa told Life Science that the prehistoric fish is related to both vertebrates with limbs and fingers, as well as animals with limb-like fins. But it was probably more closely related to limb-bearing tetrapods, making it a close ancestor of the first creatures that walked on land. It's unusual that paleospondylists lack teeth and obvious appendages, but they may not have been fossilized. The specimens found may have been at a larval or juvenile stage, or these features may have been lost due to evolution, according to Hirasawa. And while this species has not been definitively placed on the evolutionary timeline, the findings are promising. Dinosaur Reaper 
Around 80 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, in what is now Japan, a dinosaur roamed around on two legs equipped with large knife-like fingers on its upper limbs. Based on a recently identified foot bone fossil, scientists have determined that it belonged to a group of bipedal, three-toed dinosaurs called Therizinosaurs. And while the species may have had terrifying claws like Edward Scissorhands, they used them for slashing vegetation rather than eating other animals. Although it probably didn't hesitate to use them to defend itself. The specimen, dubbed Paralithorzinosaurus japonicus, close enough, was found in 2008 on the northernmost Japanese island of Hokkaido in an area that is known for being rich in fossil deposits. At the time, experts believed it was a therizinosaur, but they had little to compare it to in terms of data. Since then, many other fossils have been found, making it possible for scientists to identify the scissorhands dinosaur as one that evolved later on during the therizinosaur lineage. Its specialized claws were a key indicator as compared to the regular claws of earlier species that were not designed for any specific use. While it's impossible to know how large P. japonicus was, it's clear that the dinosaur was big and may have measured up to 30 feet long and weighed as much as 3 tons. Other therizinosaur fossils have been found throughout Asia and in North America. It's believed that the group adapted to coastal life at the time. Researchers are currently working to describe two other unidentified specimens that were found in Japan. Demon Ducks Back in 1981, scientists discovered the charred remnants of prehistoric eggs that had been cooked in fires by ancient humans. The fossils date back an estimated 50,000 years. Some were identified as emu eggs, but others appeared to be the oversized eggs of an unknown bird species that scientists would spend the next several decades arguing over. What kind of bird were they? The ongoing debate narrowed the likely species to two contenders, a member of a group of large turkey-like birds known as progura, or the infamous demon ducks of doom, which go by the scientific name Geniornis. New research has proven beyond a doubt that the demon duck of doom was the winner. Also nicknamed Australia's last thunderbird, the intimidating bird stood at six and a half feet tall and weighed up to 530 pounds. Its eggs were also very large, with each weighing as much as three and a half pounds, and they would have been a great source of protein for indigenous Australians. There's even evidence that the human appetite for the creature's eggs may have driven it to extinction, according to the Natural History Museum in London. Researchers analyzed the ancient shell fragments using a technique called protein sequencing. Because the egg's DNA had deteriorated over time, it was a good alternative to genetic testing. The team compared the results to the genomes of modern birds and were finally able to put the 41-year-old mystery to rest. Would you eat a demon duck of doom egg? Let me know in the comments below. Crocodile Face Dino One of the largest predators to ever exist was a massive crocodile-faced spiny-backed dinosaur that lived around 125 million years ago in what is now England. Fossilized fragments of the newly discovered species, nicknamed the White Rock Spinosaurid, was found off the country's southern coast on the Isle of Wight. It has yet to be given a name, but it has been identified as the youngest Spinosaurid ever found in the UK. Equipped with a slender neck and sturdy arms, Spinosaurids were carnivorous dinosaurs that roamed the Earth during the Cretaceous period. The newly described creature was related to the older, possibly amphibious, Spinosaurus. It measured at least 33 feet long and may have been Europe's biggest predatory dinosaur during its time. Few Spinosaurid fossils have been found, making the group somewhat of a mystery to scientists. Experts believe that they most likely hunted in bodies of water, including lakes, rivers, and lagoons. It's unclear how they caught their prey. Some scientists think they actively swam in pursuit of their target, while others believe they waited and then snatched up their dinner using their long jaws. The discovery of the White Rock Spinosaurid supports researchers' claims that Spinosaurids may have first evolved in Europe before spreading elsewhere throughout the prehistoric world. And while the creature was most likely very large, it wasn't immune to predators. Marks on its bones indicate that it was eaten by another frightening member of its habitat. Ancient Giraffe Relative Around 17 million years ago, an extinct giraffe relative called Discocaryx shieji 
lived in what is now northwestern China. With a thick neck and skull, it was equipped for butting heads with rival males in competition for mates. In a new study describing the species for the first time, scientists mentioned that the animal's skull was topped with a layer of keratin that is also seen in modern head-butting species, including rams, bulls, and giraffes. The disc-like structure functioned like a protective helmet, making the creature prepared for hard impact clashes with its adversaries. Researchers believe that the newly described animals built in helmet and thick neck are traits that evolved specifically in males. They had high crowned teeth that were ideal for chewing on grass, and isotope tests indicate that the species was likely an open land grazer. And while the creature may have been a distant cousin of today's giraffes, it wasn't a direct relative and has been placed on a different branch of the family tree. As part of this study, the team examined the headgear of other extinct giraffe relatives and found that the various species appear to have evolved these features specifically for fighting. Evidence suggests that modern giraffes got their long necks from the victories of past long-necked males who tended to win these battles. This idea has been around for a while. In fact, it was first introduced in 1996, and it flew directly in the face of Charles Darwin's widely accepted theory that giraffes grew long necks to reach the tree leaves they feed on. For now, the debate over how and why giraffes got their ridiculously long necks is ongoing, but experts insist that evolution likely played at least a partial role. Bulldog Face Dinosaur Located in the Egyptian Sahara Desert, the Bahariya Formation fossil site is famous for being one of the world's most dangerous prehistoric ecosystems. Paleontologists recently discovered a vertebra belonging to a newly described carnivorous dinosaur that lived between 145 million and 66 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. The creature came from a dinosaur group called Abelisaurids. Like other members of its group, it was bipedal, meaning it walked on two feet, and had a shortened face like a bulldog. While the yet unnamed species was large and intimidating, it probably wasn't at the top of its food chain, according to paleontologist Matthew Lamana, who spoke with Live Science about the discovery. A recently published study likens the dinosaur to a heavy-set Tyrannosaurus rex with stubbier arms. Researchers believe that it most likely measured between 16 and 20 feet long, making it a lot smaller than many of the other abelisaurids and other creatures that shared its habitat. In addition to similar dinosaurs, the creature lived alongside giant predatory fish, crocodilians, and marine reptiles that are all extinct today. The American Cheetah After coming face to face with another male member of its species in a cliff cave in America's Grand Canyon around 20,000 years ago, a young cheetah lost the battle when he was bitten through the spine. He died from his injuries while his opponent left the scene. His remains, along with two other fossilized specimens retrieved from Grand Canyon caves, recently underwent a study to trace the lineage of the extinct American cheetah. Researchers determined that the species may not have been exceptionally fast runners like modern-day African cheetahs, but that they may have more closely resembled today's snow leopards. This would mean that they favored rocky habitats and ate mountain goats and sheep. When the fossils were first discovered, they were mistakenly identified as belonging to mountain lions. But scientists recently reanalyzed the bones and realized that they belonged to American cheetahs, which were closely related to mountain lions, but had some characteristics more reminiscent of a modern African cheetah, including short snout and a slim body. The American cheetah went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Before then, it was found all over what is now the United States. Scientists even believe that the reason the modern-day pronghorn antelope can run so fast is because at one time, it was tasked with outrunning the American cheetah. None of the species' modern predators reach speeds even close to the antelope's maximum of 60 miles per hour. Yet experts figure that there must have been a reason that they are capable of traveling at such a high speed. The mysteries surrounding the American cheetah and the animals it shared its environment with continue as researchers gather more information. Argentinosaurus Discovered in 1987 on a farm in southwestern Argentina, the Argentinosaurus genus of sauropods represents one of the largest known land animals of all time. It hails from the diverse Titanosaur family, 
which consisted of humongous sauropods that existed on every known continent, and many of which thrived up until the dinosaurs went extinct around 66 million years ago. Paleontologists can't seem to agree on exactly how big the creature was, with more generous estimates suggesting that Argentinosaurus was 100 to 130 feet long and weighed as much as 100 tons. But even the more conservative guess about its size, which put the dinosaur's length at 75 to 85 feet from head to tail, and its weight at up to 75 tons, indicate that Argentinosaurus was one of the biggest animals that ever lived. Nobody knows for sure how large the dinosaur actually was, because it's only known from fragmentary remains, leaving scientists tasked with making educated guesses based on the more complete remains of smaller sauropods. Argentinosaurus grew slowly, taking up to 40 years to reach its maximum size. Based on what experts know about other titanosaurs, it probably laid between 10 and 15 eggs at a time, each measuring up to a foot in diameter. Given its size, Argentinosaurus was likely a slow mover, plodding along at a maximum of 5 miles per hour. This would have made the species vulnerable to smaller but faster-moving carnivores that it shared its territory with, like Giganotosaurus, which probably couldn't take it down one-on-one, -on -one, but may have had strength in numbers. Argentinosaurus is just one candidate among several competitors for the title of the largest land animal that ever lived, including this list right here of names I can't pronounce. The Crocodile Monster Millions of years ago, there was a marine reptile with an unusually long neck. The creature lived in the seaway that once covered Wyoming and much of the United States. It had jaws like a crocodile and was able to whip its neck back and forth like an elephant's trunk. This snaky, croc-faced monster was arguably more terrifying than anything alive today. It was a kind of plesiosaur that typically comes in two distinct types. There was the plesiosaur with a long neck, like that of a giant serpent, and a small head. Then there was the plesiosaur that had a short neck and a gigantic head like that of a crocodile on steroids. The plesiosaur uncovered in Wyoming was entirely unique. Researchers from the College of Charleston say the Wyoming plesiosaur was a weird cross between the two. It lived between 101 million and 66 million years ago. Officially called the Serpentisucops fisterae, it was 23 feet long, with teeth like skewers. Its main diet likely consisted of squishy cephalopods. It wasn't designed for breaking bones like modern crocodiles, but rather for piercing soft, gooey flesh. The biggest dinosaur ever. A recent study has announced the new lord of the dinosaurs. This new dino is allegedly the biggest that ever lived, making the Tyrannosaurus rex look like a baby chicken. It was a plant-eating behemoth about as heavy as a space shuttle, weighing an unbelievable 76 tons. Although its fossils were found in southern Argentina in 2012, it was only now that scientists were able to confirm its immense size. Its name is Patagotitan Mayorum, and it belonged to the family of dinosaurs known as Titanosaurs. If the study is correct, the Patagotitan was the biggest of all the Titanosaurs. The only fossils found were uncovered in Patagonia and dated to be about 100 million years old. We only have six fossils right now, which is a pretty big shock considering how massive the creature was. You would think such a big dinosaur would leave a lot more bones lying around. Researchers say it averaged about 122 feet in length, standing 20 feet tall at the shoulders. Its enormous neck was where it really got its length making it so big that its head currently sticks out into the hallway outside its exhibit at the American Museum of Natural History. It was almost too big to fit inside the museum. Up until now, the Argentinosaurus had the title of the biggest dinosaur ever, but now that title has passed on to the Patago Titan. Rare Dino Mummy Scientists believe they have stumbled upon a dinosaur mummy in Canada. The entire skeleton of what appears to be a hadrosaur was identified buried in a rocky hill in Dinosaur Provincial Park, located in Alberta. The reason scientists are calling it a mummy is because the entire animal looks to be preserved in the rock, making it an extremely rare find. The problem is, it is in a very precarious position. The discovery was first made in 2021 on a scouting mission by paleontologists. The park happens to be one of the richest fossil deposits in the world. During the mission, 
a volunteer noticed a piece of a dinosaur skeleton sticking out from a hillside. The team returned in 2022 and began an excavation. They haven't been able to get the dinosaur fully out yet, but they have revealed its tail and foot. They think it's a large duck-billed dinosaur, perhaps a juvenile. That makes it even more exciting because adolescents are more rare in the fossil record. If scientists can pull the full skeleton out of the rock, they could gain a better understanding of how hadrosaurs grew into adults and what their development was like. But by far the most impressive part is that the skeleton is covered in fossilized skin. The suggestion is that underneath the rock, we have a fully mummified dino with its skin intact. This is highly unusual and a very big deal, because maybe, just maybe, we might be able to get some dino DNA. The only sad part is that it could take years for scientists to painstakingly chip the hadrosaur from the hillside. Giant Mystery Dinosaur an entirely new species of horned dinosaur was recently discovered in New Mexico. Well, actually, the specimen was discovered in 1975. But it took decades of research at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History before scientists were able to identify the dinosaur as a new kind of animal. At last, they finished cleaning, investigating, comparing samples, and doing their due diligence. Researchers have now named the dino Bistoceratops frosorium. It lived 74 million years ago in the Cretaceous era, the very last era before the dinosaurs were wiped out by the deadly asteroid. The dinosaur is a type of ceratopsid, which is related to the famous Triceratops. It was a heavy herbivore with four bulky legs, long horns, a beak instead of a normal mouth, and a forehead like a shelf made of bone. Although it was a truly gigantic creature, researchers believe it was a gentle giant. It was mainly hunted by the Tyrannosaurus rex, as is evident by marks left on the Bisticeratops skull. Paleontologists identified bite marks on its jaws, cheek, and head. It appears to have been lightly snacked on by some kind of Tyrannosaur. The only thing researchers don't know is if the Tyrannosaur killed it or just nibbled on its dead body. As for size, the Bisticeratops was enormous. It grew to be 20 feet long and up to 4 tons. It also used its horns both as defensive weapons and in mating rituals. In the case of ceratopsids, the size of their horns really did matter if they wanted to secure a mate. It's shout out time! I want to say a big thank you to Wayne Hersel and Brad Long for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing dinosaur discoveries. Saber-toothed predators Scientists recently described one of the very first carnivorous cats that lived 42 million years ago. Its name is borderline unpronounceable, but we're gonna try. It's called Diego Loris van Valkenburge. It lived at a time when predatory mammals were starting to figure out how to survive on a diet of just meat. Predators had not yet fully developed the tools needed to pursue a strictly carnivorous diet. One of the new features of feline evolution was specialized teeth, which could be used for slicing raw meat. This is what gave the Diego Aloris the advantage. Unfortunately, there is only a single piece of lower jawbone with a couple of teeth attached that proves this prehistoric saber-toothed predator even existed. That is the only physical piece of evidence we have, and yet scientists have done a lot with that one piece. They know the animal belonged to the subfamily of extinct cats known as Machaeroidinae. Ashley Paus from the San Diego Natural History Museum says at the time the cat was alive, nothing else like it had ever existed. A couple of mammal ancestors had possessed fangs, but nothing else had teeth like scissors for slicing apart their victims. This was the first carnivorous cat in the evolutionary tree. Every house cat you've ever met got its teeth from this first leap in feline evolution. The Diego Loris was also likely the ancestor of the Smilodon Fatalis, the most famous saber-toothed cat of all, that lived during the Ice Age. Dinosaur versus Ancient Croc in 1999, a 23-foot-long monster of a dinosaur was discovered near the small North Dakota town of Marmarth. It was a plant-eating type of hadrosaur called an Edmontosaurus. The discovery was huge because the creature had fossilized skin, something very rare in the world of paleontology. The dinosaur was briefly investigated and then it was put into storage. Recently, researchers took another look at it. They were shocked to discover that the Edmontosaurus had been chomped on by an ancient crocodile. 
they found its flesh was ripped apart, and that may be the reason it was preserved as a mummy. Scientists working on the project say they really weren't expecting to find bite marks. Researchers have always assumed skin would never mummify if it was damaged by the teeth of a carnivore before it was buried. In fact, they have always thought the only way that soft tissue of any kind could be preserved was if the remains were buried almost instantly. For example, if a dinosaur was caught in a landslide and buried under tons of sediment. But here's where the mystery gets even more confusing. Researchers identified the bite marks of an ancient crocodile relative, and the bite marks of a different animal that chewed the hadrosaur's tail. It's believed all that chewing separated some skin, allowing it to dry out for several months before it was buried and underwent fossilization. Dinosaur Eggs A recent discovery of dinosaur eggs may have just proved that dinosaurs operated in a complex social structure. In fact, Dinosaurs may have worked together as a community in a way that some humans still can't even achieve. It all started in 2013 when some eggs were exhumed from a dinosaur graveyard in Argentina. Since then, over 100 eggs have been found in prehistoric nests. Scans have shown that the eggs all belong to a species of herbivore called Musaris patagonicus. Testing the shells proved that the eggs came from 193 million years ago. But there's another part of this discovery. Researchers found fossilized bones from 80 juveniles and adults at the same site in Argentina. The shocking part was that the remains were separated by age. For example, eggs and early hatchlings were found in one spot, adolescents were found nearby but in a different area, and then adult bones were discovered spread throughout the area, usually in pairs. These dinosaurs lived in a common nesting ground and were extremely intelligent. The young dinos congregated in what researchers have called schools, while the adults hung out with their partners and foraged for food. Giant Ostrich 85 million years ago, Mississippi was overrun with gigantic dinosaurs that looked like modern ostriches. They were called ornithomimosaurs, which translates roughly to bird mimics. They weren't birds, but they did look a lot like them, hence the name. They were bipedal, meaning that they ran around on two legs. They were distantly related to the ferocious Tyrannosaurus rex, but they were also very different. These were significantly smaller than their Tyrannosaur cousins. They were built lighter and had the one thing the T-Rex didn't, long arms. Bird mimics also weren't strictly carnivores, but ate a varied diet of meat and plants. They had beaks just like birds, but some of them had teeth, and some of them only had their beaks. They also ranged greatly in size. Some of these dinosaurs stood up to 36 feet tall, while some were no larger than an average dog. Two new species of ornithomimosaurs were recently discovered in Mississippi. One weighed about 1,760 pounds and was still growing when it died. The other was about 50% smaller, and yet they were found in the same place and lived around the same time. What this seems to suggest is that Mississippi was totally overrun with multiple species of rampaging ostrich-like dinosaurs, which roamed all across the eastern United States through Appalachia. Mystery Fossils In 1907, curious fossils were discovered in some sand dunes in Scotland. The fossils were not preserved bones, but rather the outlines of bones sketched into some pieces of sandstone. The only way scientists could study the imprints was to create a wax mold and take it back to the lab. Researchers believed they had discovered an extinct reptile about 8 inches long, with an oversized head, long hind limbs, and a short neck. They named the creature Scleromoclus taylori, but could never identify what it was. It would be 115 years before modern paleontologists used X-ray scans to solve the mystery once and for all. A mystery 231 million years in the making. High-resolution X-ray scans revealed anatomical features that had never been seen before from the Scleromoclus. These scans were able to firmly place the animal inside a group of reptiles known as loggerpetids. These tiny reptiles were remarkable because they shared anatomical traits with pterosaurs, making them a kind of missing link in the evolution of the world's first flying vertebrates. Scientists have never been able to understand the evolution of pterosaurs, a hugely diverse group of creatures unlike anything alive today. They were some of the biggest animals on the planet, yet also some of the smallest. They were flying reptiles that came in so many shapes and sizes, 
it's been difficult to figure out where they came from. The oldest pterosaur lived 220 million years ago and was a fully formed flying organism. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere and then branched out in a hundred different ways. But the loggerpetids may have had something to do with pterosaur evolution. These reptiles may have been the ancestors of pterosaurs, as is evident by certain physical characteristics specifically elongated fourth fingers that no other creature had. These fourth fingers were what pterosaurs used to support their wings. However, it's still a mystery. The Scleromoculus didn't have any obvious adaptations to help it climb, glide, or even jump. How it went from walking to flying is unknown. Mammoth Tusk a man from the Saddle Lake Cree Nation in the Canadian province of Alberta made a shocking discovery on his property. Jared Cardinal was digging a hole in his backyard when he hit something hard, about six feet deep. At first, it felt like he had hit a piece of wood with his shovel, like from a coffin. But when he cleared away the dirt, it turned out he had something very special. He had just dug up a piece of a tusk. Jared had in his hands the tusk of a woolly mammoth that lived in Canada about 11,000 years ago. It was in bad shape, broken and cracked, but it was definitely a tusk. It wasn't the whole thing, just a fragment of it. And there could be more remains from an extinct mammoth somewhere in his yard. He refused to hand the tusk over to any museums, so we don't know exactly how old it is. We also don't know if Jared's found anything else. Right now, he's thrilled to have a real, tangible piece of ancient history on display in his house, dug from his own backyard. Thanks for watching. What would you do if you found a mammoth tusk? Bacillosaurus. 40 million years ago, a fearsome, sharp toothed creature named the Bacillosaurus roamed the Earth. Although its name means king lizard, the creature was actually a predatory whale. Originally discovered in a shallow sea in what is now Alabama, the skeleton of the first Basilosaurus ever found was so long and slender that it looked like a snake. According to a study published in January 2019, the Basilosaurus was a fierce predator. At first, scientists thought it was an aquatic reptile, but by studying the animal's teeth, scientists discovered it was actually a mammal. Known to be the largest meat-eater of its time, the Basilosaurus went extinct as the climate changed. Because most of the bones have been found in Alabama, the creature is now the state fossil. However, a slightly smaller species of the Bacillosaurus was found in Egypt, where paleontologists discovered fossils of hundreds of the species 140 kilometers southwest of Cairo. See, not just pyramids over there. After analyzing the remains at a museum in Germany, researchers discovered the remains of a baby Dorodon, an ancient whale that lived 40 million years ago inside the stomach of a Bacillosaurus. But researchers wanted more evidence that the Bacillosaurus was a predator, and after examining the bones of the prey, they found evidence of bite marks on the Dorodon's head. I think that's good enough, right? Having gone extinct 35 million years ago, this king of lizards was believed to grow to up to 60 feet long, although there's still a lot unknown about the Bacillosaurus, including its color and behavior. This long-lost predator was definitely a terrifying beast. Dacosaurus even though it doesn't look like one, the Dacosaurus is a true prehistoric crocodile, a strange creature that looks like a cross between a Carnosaur, which is similar to a Tyrannosaurus, and with the body of a Mosasaur, an extinct marine reptile, the Dacosaurus is definitely one of the more interesting looking prehistoric creatures. With a pair of primitive flippers, the Dacosaurus was not a very strong swimmer, although it is believed it was probably fast enough to catch prey, including fish, shellfish, and squid, this prehistoric crocodile was about 15 feet long and weighed around 2,000 pounds. First discovered in the mid-19th century, its name means tearing lizard. It lived approximately 150 million years ago from the late Jurassic period through the early Cretaceous period. Its strange makeup is believed to be the result of the creature evolving into something else. Researchers believe it was beginning to adapt to the shallow seas around North and South America, which give it its distinctive look. And now for number 8, but first, be sure to subscribe and let me know your favorite prehistoric creature in the comments below. Mosasaurus The first skull fragments of the Mosasaurus, a prehistoric reptile, were found in the Netherlands in 1764. But it wasn't until a retired army physician discovered more remains that the hunt for the creature's origins really heated up. First believed to be a crocodile and then later mistaken for an ancient sperm whale, the Mosasaurus is believed to have evolved from monitor lizards. In 1808, a naturalist compared the anatomy of the unknown bones to others and identified the creature as an aquatic one who had flippers, not feet. 
A large creature with a heavy build, the Mosasaurus is believed to have a preference for larger, slower prey, most likely other marine reptiles. With side-facing eyes, it meant that the Mosasaurus had poor vision, and studies suggest it did not rely upon gauging distances between itself and prey when it went hunting for food. Its fossils also show that the olfactory bulb, the part of the creature that processes smells, was one of the most poorly developed areas in the creature. This led investigators to believe the Mosasaurus didn't necessarily use smell to detect injured prey when looking for an easy meal. Because of this, scientists believe the Mosasaurus possibly swam in the upper ocean and waited for other marine reptiles to surface for air. After using its tail to provide a quick burst of speed, the Mosasaurus then launched a sudden attack at their prey. Marine reptiles, fish, including sharks and even other dinosaurs were part of the diet of the Mosasaurus. The carnivore, which can measure from 15 to 18 meters long, was often found in Western Europe and North America, and remains an impressively large oceanic predator. Liviaton Often compared to the sperm whale, the Liviaton is an ancient mammal that was discovered in what is now known as Peru. Because only partially preserved skulls, lower jaws, and teeth have been found, the creature is often compared to the sperm whale. Because of this, the size of the Liviaton has only been estimated, but it comes in at about 13 to 16 meters long, which makes it comparable to the size of megatooth sharks. An apex predator that fed upon small prey animals, which compared to the Liviaton were medium-sized baleen whales, the creature had teeth that were larger than the megalodon, the massive prehistoric shark. Since a full set of remains for the creature has never been found, scientists can only speculate about its behavior, but it is believed they hunted by approaching from the bottom and slamming into their target from underneath. But you can't forget about those teeth. Measuring 36 centimeters long, the teeth of the Liviaton were considered to be the largest known teeth for the purpose of eating. Because of this, scientists also believe that the Liviaton could have trapped smaller whales' ribcage between their jaws and crushed them with those massive teeth. Similar to the modern sperm whale, the Liviaton had an organ that was filled with wax and oil that scientists believe the creature may have used in echolocation to find its prey. Even if you've never heard about the Liviaton before now, which I doubt, knowing that the species name L. Melville, in honor of author Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick, may give you an idea of just how large and scary this predator really was. Nothosaurus in the middle of the Triassic period, about 240 million years ago, a family of marine reptiles known as Nothosaurus lived in the oceans of the world. Not fully adapted to life in the water, some Nothosaurus had clawed feet, meaning they could still walk on land. With long teeth to catch fish, Nothosaurus is believed to have hunted in the water and then went ashore to rest like a seal. With a long, flat head and very long jaws, the Nothosaurus had a head like a modern crocodile. Its needle-like teeth were adapted to grip fish, but they were not very good for chewing. Its flexible neck helped it to swing its jaw side to side to snap up nearby fish, and each of its forelimbs ended in five long clawed toes, which helped them scramble over slippery rocks on the shore. Its long, streamlined body helped the Nothosaurus swim efficiently through the water, and it used its long tail and webbed feet to push it forward through the current. Also similar to sea lions, the Nothosaurus gave birth to live young instead of laying eggs. Believed to have lived in the middle to late Triassic periods, Nothosaurus evolved from terrestrial reptiles that were distantly related to lizards and snakes. About 10 feet long, Nothosaurus may have evolved into plesiosaurs, large marine reptiles. These creatures were not dinosaurs, but that does not make them any less impressive. Titanoboa the name of the Titanoboa, a 40-foot-long snake found in Colombia, 60 miles from the Caribbean coast, says it all. Weighing more than a ton, the giant serpent looked like a modern-day boa constrictor, but huge. A swamp dweller and fearsome predator, the Titanoboa, the largest snake ever found, was nearly as high as a man's waist at the thickest part of its body. If that isn't the most remarkable thing about the Titanoboa, the fact that researchers were able to find it at all is equally impressive. When snakes die, their skulls fall apart and their bones are lost to the elements. However, the remains of the Titanoboa found in 2011 by paleontologists gave the researchers the ability to compare Titanoboa to other snakes, so that way they could figure out where it sits in the evolutionary timeline. Found in one of the world's largest coal operations, the fossil was just one of countless specimens uncovered in the Cerrejón region. Known as one of the world's richest, most important fossil deposits, scientists have found a window into an ancient tropical ecosystem of plants and animals. 
Back when Cerrejón was just a swampy jungle, deep water flowed through the area that was teeming with turtles that had shells twice the size of manhole covers and crocodiles that were more than a dozen feet long. But the Titanoboa was truly the lord of the jungle, and the discovery of its skull will help scientists to determine more about its size and what it ate. As work continues in the colossal mine, every day is a new discovery as material is trucked away. Underlying mudstone is unearthed, and fossils of exotic leaves, plants, and the bones of fascinating prehistoric creatures are revealed. Helicoprion This sea beast could weigh up to 1,000 pounds and measured about 13 to 25 feet long. But the most surprising thing is the helicoprion's spiral-shaped teeth. It's taken a very long time to recreate this creature and what it looked like 290 million years ago. A Russian geologist first named the creature, which means spiral saw, based on a fossil fragment found in Kazakhstan in 1899. But where did this spiky spiral belong? Initially, the geologist believed the fossil came from the fish's mouth and curled upward along the snout. But an American paleontologist found it hard to believe that the strange whorl protruded from the fish's teeth and instead guessed that it came from somewhere along the fish's back and was used as some sort of defense mechanism. Further speculation continued until 1907, when a zoologist found a better preserved fossilized specimen that actually showed the whorl in the jawbone of a helicoprion. In 1950, another specimen was discovered by a Danish paleontologist. With 117 serrated tooth crowns sitting on a spiral, scientists finally had evidence that the whorl was contained inside the helicoprion's mouth. But how? Artist and amateur helicoprion specialist Ray Troll reported to National Geographic in 2011 that the classic image of the whorl wasn't correct and that the helicoprion would be getting a makeover. Researchers from Idaho State University used CAT scans and made 3D virtual reconstructions of the jaws of the helicoprion, showing that the teeth were within the jaws, finally revealing what it looked like and how it ate. Also, it turns out that they are more similar to ratfish than to sharks. They used the whorl to create a rolling back and slicing mechanism which was perfect for eating squid. Over the last 50 years, researchers have continued to investigate and now suggest that the whorl either extended awkwardly from the lower lip, curled under the chin of the creature, or that it could have sat inside the mouth or possibly even further down the creature's throat. After further reconstruction, a team of scientists found that the tooth whorl was part of the lower jaw and was similar to sharks, who have multiple rows of teeth that are continuously replaced. The teeth are thought to be concealed in a spot near where the helicoprion's upper and lower jaws meet. As the teeth continued to grow and were pushed towards the front of the jaw, they eventually spiraled to form the base of newer teeth. So how did they use these remarkable teeth? Researchers believe that after the helicoprion closed their jaws, the creature would push the material back with the whorls of their teeth, slicing and forcing the food to the back of their mouths. They also believe that their jaws could have extended past 50 centimeters long and contained upwards of 150 teeth. As experts continued to study the fossilized material, they came to the conclusion that the helicoprion was not a shark but a chimera, part of a group of fish that branched off from sharks 400 million years ago. So although the structure of their teeth are very common to that of what modern sharks have, the helicoprion is indeed a unique species all its own. Sarcosuchus The biggest crocodile that ever lived, the Sarcosuchus is believed to have kept growing at a steady rate throughout its lifetime. The creature, whose name is Greek for flesh crocodile, is believed to have reached a length of up to 40 feet from head to tail. When you compare that to the 25-foot maximum for the biggest crocodile living today, Sarcosuchus is an impressive beast. Weighing more than 10 tons, the creature is not believed to have hunted other dinosaurs for food, but that doesn't mean that they didn't get into a prehistoric rumble every now and then. The size of the Sarcosuchus would have been more than capable of breaking the necks of large dinosaurs. By studying the bones of the prehistoric creature, it was easy for scientists to determine that their eyes didn't move left and right, but up and down instead, indicating that they spent a lot of time submerged below the surface of the water scanning for food. Still, it might surprise you to know that the super croc dined mostly on fish. Believed to have roamed the Earth over 100 million years ago, the Sarcosuchus was a reptile that lived in northern Africa, where the Sahara Desert now lies. Although the nickname Super Croc might lead you to believe that Sarcosuchus was a direct ancestor of crocodiles, it was actually an obscure type of prehistoric reptile known as a Pholidosaur, which are similar to crocodiles but went extinct millions of years ago. Covered in armored plates, the only place on the body of the Sarcosuchus without these plates were its tail and the front of its head. The biggest crocodilian that ever lived, the Sarcosuchus, a 40-foot powerhouse, is an impressive relic of the Mesozoic era. Quetzalcoatlus 
Named for an ancient Mesoamerican deity, the largest species of Quetzalcoatlus was actually the largest of all flying creatures to have ever soared the skies in prehistoric times. These large flying reptiles lived between 144 and 66 million years ago, and were around for roughly 80 million years. The creatures had a long pointed skull, long neck, and small torso. Known as a predatory animal, Quetzalcoatlus were portrayed as the giant vulture that scavenged for the carcasses of other dinosaurs. Because most of their fossils have been found inland, researchers at one time believed the large pterosaurs, or flying reptiles, were believed to have also been skimmers who hunted for fish in freshwater areas. But after further study focusing on their jaw and neck structures, scientists concluded they would need to dive for prey or scoop fish from the surface of the water. Even though Quetzalcoatlus had a small torso, they are believed to have been able to launch themselves off the ground and travel non-stop for thousands of kilometers. They also had thin wings, but they were packed with dense muscle fibers that required them to only flap occasionally to keep themselves airborne. With two species, one that was midway in size between the Tyrannosaurus and Raptors, the larger species of Sarcosuchus stood as tall as a giraffe. While fossils of the Quetzalcoatlus are scarce, it has been up to scientists to reconstruct their skeletons by comparing them to close relatives. Still, this animal, with its impressive aeronautic abilities and titanic reputation, helps Quetzalcoatlus live up to the reputation of its feathered serpent namesake, the Megalodon. Even though it went extinct millions of years ago, the Megalodon still remains one of the ocean's most feared creatures. Known as the largest predatory shark ever recorded, the Meg, whose name means giant tooth, died out long before humans evolved. Because their fossil record is incomplete, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where the Meg went extinct. But when a research group at the University of Zurich studied fossils to determine their age back in 2014, they found most dated back from 15.9 million to 2.6 million years ago. After that, all signs of the creature's existence ended. By looking at the size of their teeth, researchers believe the Megalodon could grow up to 60 feet long, while others think they reach up to 80 feet. To compare, modern great white sharks reach an average length of about 20 feet max. Since most of the fossils that have been found are teeth and not bones, their size is purely scientific speculation. But with teeth that can measure up to 7 inches in length, almost 3 times longer than the teeth of great whites, their massive size is still kind of mind-blowing. Even more fascinating is the fact that megalodon teeth have been found all over the world, and in great quantities. Seen as a predator at the very top of the food chain, Megalodon fed on other large marine mammals like whales and dolphins, but their evolution alongside those whales, who had the ability to regulate their temperature of their bodies to exist in colder water, which the Megalodon could not do, is what scientists believe led to the extinction of this king of the ocean. Thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell before you go! See you soon! Bye!